This is American Republic. In case you forgot what class you were in, this is Chapter 24, Cold War Tensions. Uh, you should have gotten your Week 7 packet now. Hopefully you've turned in your Week 6 packet. Week 7 included your Chapter 23 test. So having taken now 23 test, you also should have gotten the notes for Chapter 24. Let me give you guys a heads up about what to expect for exams coming up in the next couple weeks. Um, I am not planning on giving you a regular, what you would call, uh, you know, semester exam. Instead, we're just going to continue taking notes over the next chapter, Chapter 24, and your last grade will be a chapter test. I see no real reason to give you uh, an extensive exam in which you'll be allowed to use your notes and tests and other things before. It just sounds like a lot of paperwork going back and forth. So we'll just be doing a regular test. Uh, we'll start the notes this chapter. We might even have to continue the notes into the next chapter. But then you'll just be taking the chapter 24 test. Make sense? Sounds good to me. Let's get started into this chapter. In the 1940s, America helped other nations win a war for democracy, and in the next 30 years, it fought against communism. We need to remember that um, there are always going to be people in governments that desire to control others and take away their freedoms. Freedom is hard to maintain and is constantly threatened. Therefore, freedom or free people and societies must always be vigilant against those who would destroy it. And as we go through this time period, see if you can find evidence of God's control in the events of the 1940s, 1950s, and into the 1960s. On page 477, I want you to read the first two paragraphs at the top of the page to yourself. Once you have finished reading, please unpause the video and we'll continue. Let's get started. Roman number one, home from the war. With 9 million veterans returning from war, some Americans worried about another depression like the one after World War I. Instead, America was poised to experience growth and prosperity. Letter A, a boom time. What boom in this case refers to is a growth of, well, things. Let's talk about it. There will be lots of jobs and lots of consumer goods during this period. Coming off the war in which they had to ration what they purchased, Americans wanted new things and more labor-saving devices like dishwashers, washing machines, power lawnmowers, cars, and boats. Factories could not produce enough to satisfy the public. Let me give you an example. World War II brought many changes to the automobile industry. In 1942, automobile manufacturers stopped making cars and began making tanks and military trucks instead. Also, tires and gasoline were rationed during the war. The unsatisfied demand for automobiles and other consumer goods grew throughout the war. As soon as possible after the war ended, industry shifted to production of consumer goods. People added their names to long waiting lists and paid for cars before they were even built. In addition to new models of popular pre-war brands like Ford, Oldsmobile, and Chevrolet, new brands came out, some to success, others to utter failure. One successful new vehicle was a direct product of the war. During the war, the government hired the Will Willys Company to build a general purpose vehicle for the army. The soldiers who used the vehicle called it a Jeep, after GP, general purpose. The Jeep was such a successful, popular vehicle that Willys convinced the government to allow the company to manufacture consumer versions. One unsuccessful vehicle was the Tucker 48, known as the Tucker Torpedo. Advertised as the Car of Tomorrow, it had a long, low, sleek body style that engineers described as the most aerodynamic style of that day. It also had multiple advanced features, an aluminum engine block, fuel injection, and an air-cooled engine. It had three headlights, including one in the center of the grille that turned from side to side as the steering wheel turned. 
In addition, the car could go from 0 to 60 miles per hour in 10 seconds. Woo, super fast. The car's original price was $2,450. The Tucker Car Corporation sold $25 million in stock and dealer franchises and built 51 of the vehicles before the company folded. Yeah, they only had they only made 51 vehicles. More than 40 of those 51 Tuckers are still in existence and they're valued at 200,000 to 750 thousand dollars talk about a rare car number one the gi bill the gi bill gave veterans benefits such as helping them find jobs and get money for education and home purchases this helped veterans move into civilian life veterans enrolled in night classes and colleges in record numbers home ownership also grew after the war Another boom that took place was the baby boom. The baby boom and green revolution. Many couples married and started families. This new generation of children were called baby boomers. Uh, not used in a derogatory man to describe an old person today. That was literally the original purpose of this term. The baby boom generation made up a significant portion of the population and still does today. A demand for housing was followed by a demand for baby-related products. When the children of the baby boom started school, there was an acute shortage of classrooms and teachers. By the mid-1960s, those children would be young adults headed for college or the job market. Basically, at this point in time, the baby boom generation signifies uh, anyone over the age of 60 today, so uh, probably some of your grandparents fall into that category. Although some people worried about whether the world could sustain increasing population growth, technological advances helped make this growth possible. Speaking of which, technological advances took place in the fields of medicines and vaccines, synthetic fibers, plastics, and more. These new advances began during World War II, but it was able to be applied to peacetime uses. Improvements in agri American agriculture, such as better irrigation methods and new insecticides, hybrid crops, machinery, and fertilizers, have sometimes been called the Green Revolution. God has commanded us to be fruitful and multiply, as well as to rule over the earth. This shows that we can do both harmoniously. Number three, the growth of the suburbs. People began moving to the suburbs and living in identical homes made quickly and cheaply. These neighborhoods were sometimes nicknamed Levitt Towns. These neighborhoods were built cheaply and identically, uh, with only one or two or maybe three different model styles of homes. In, uh, most of the people who moved to the suburbs were young whites, while the city dwellers tended to be the poor, the elderly, and the ethnic minorities. Cities could not collect heavy taxes from the poor, so cities began to decay. City government sought help from the federal government. We also see the growth in business and traffic. The number of cars increased, and with them came more gas stations, parts, store, parts stores, and other automotive businesses. Shopping centers were built, and cities expanded, producing urban sprawl, as they called it. More roads and highways were built, and of course, more traffic jams appeared. Known as the Sun Belt Migration, this was the movement of many people to the south and southwest parts of the U.S. Americans became more willing to relocate to find better jobs. Uh, probably, though not officially linked to this Sun Belt Migration, was the uh, invention and mass production of air conditioning. Yeah, makes sense. How many of us would still want to live in Florida if there was no air conditioning around? I know I wouldn't. Number four, mass culture. The popularization of television 
decreased regional differences across the U.S. In 1946, only 7,000 television sets existed. By 1950, there were 4 million. By 1960, there were 74 million. All Americans watched the same programs and the same commercials. They only had a few channels. Thoughtful Americans worried that the new mass culture of television was shallow. Since television now occupied so much American leisure time, worries persisted that American character would be sapped by the emptiness of most television programs. Hmm, I'm sure they couldn't be right. <laughs> Marketers and advertisers used television as an opportunity to become wealthy. For instance, stores sold many Davy Crockett lunchboxes, coon skin caps, and buckskin jackets, all because of the popularity of a Disney show that involved Davy Crockett. On page 479, there's a pink box entitled Popular TV Shows of the 50s. Please read that box yourself. Once you have finished, please unpause the video and we'll continue. Question might be asked, what is popular culture, pop culture? Well, the simple answer is the things that are popular in life. Well, as Christians, we need to develop a Christian view of popular pop culture. What are some things that are popular today that include objectionable elements? Some thoughts I have might include blasphemous or crude language, sexual content, gratuitous violence, and so on. Consider the following aspects of pop culture that should concern Christians. One, popular culture tends to provide diversions from serious thought and self-examination. Uh, note that self-examination is essential for conversion and Christian growth. We can't grow as Christians without meditating on God's word. Well, diversions tend to prevent us from doing that. Number two, popular culture tends to value what is new and dismiss whatever is old. Christians, however, gain wisdom from a very old book the Bible. Because popular culture tends to dismiss what is old, it often divides generations, which have their own styles of music, dress, and entertainment. High culture and folk culture have their own temptations, but they also have the virtue of bringing young people into an existing tradition. High culture and folk culture that bring generations together. Scripture tells young people to value the wisdom of the old and strongly opposes the idea that younger generations should rebel or even stand aloof from older generations. Number three, pop culture tends to value what is immediate. Note that developing biblical virtues requires patience and diligence. In fact, patience and diligence are two virtues that are commended in Scripture. Number four, pop culture tends towards celebrity culture. Celebrity cultures clash with the biblical virtues of humility and godliness. And then lastly, number five, pop culture tends to neglect religion and religious themes to appeal to as wide of an audience as possible. Note, God should not be marginalized. That means minimized in our cultural endeavors. God, Christianity, our belief should be completely enraptured, enwrapped, uh, completely inundated, completely um, saturated with the Word of God. That's how our lives should be lived, rather than marginalized, minimized to uh, just on Sunday morning going to church. That's all the time we have for in class. I hope the beginning of week seven goes well for you as you start preparing for exams and other classes and as we start this last class in history. Hope you all have a good rest of the day. Be good, do good. Bye.